Adil Ali Ahmed says that when ISIS took over his hometown in 2014, many welcomed them. As they were sick of the Iraqi army acting like an army. I know it's early, but I was still going to get off my chest. They came suddenly. It was like a miracle. They lifted all the checkpoints. I just found out that nobody would ask you where you were going. Yesterday, because of this, I became convinced and joined them. Around 4 p.m., the recruiter from my high school, so I've known throughout my entire high school career, Lieutenant Grant, was killed. He was killed saving a good friend of ours who served with him. I was forced to do this. He was killed overseas fighting ISIS. They came under ambush and he was hit by a sniper. Or not a sniper, but one of the soldiers. They were both taken down. If I could, I would tell the people I've heard. Brian Gordon was knocked to the ground. He had got shot in the leg. I mean, and then the soldier went to reload. The ISIS troop went to reload and fire again. And he tried firing back, but his gun got jammed. And the soldier went to shoot Gordon again, but Grant stepped in front of him and took the bullet. He made the ultimate sacrifice. So for those of you that don't think ISIS is real, you better listen up because they are real. My best friend Derek gave his life to fight these guys. Some of my best friends like Lieutenant Grant and Corporal Derek Wyatt gave their lives. They gave the ultimate sacrifice to stop these guys. Because the people in Mosul have so this is going out to Grant's family. If you guys are watching this, and if you guys see this, you guys have my deepest condolences, and I am truly sorry for your loss. Your son was like a brother to me. I've known my whole entire high school career, and they actually considered me an honorary member of the ROTC there at East High School. And it was thanks to him that they did that. So, thank you guys. I just want to say thank you. Because your son and his sacrifices, we will defeat ISIS. You guys that don't realize that the ultimate sacrifices our soldiers make every day. Like, y'all don't realize, y'all don't know what it's like to be a military family member. For those of you that bash on our soldiers, you don't know what it's like to have your family member, to have your friend, your father, your son, your daughter, your aunt, your uncle. to leave, to go overseas, and fight in a war, and not know if they're going to make it back. And a lot of the times, they don't make it back. Like, I've lost a lot of friends in the military, and a lot of family members too, in wars like this. I've lost a very big amount of friends that I've known from high school in the Iraq war and Derek's the first or not Derek but Grant's the first one that I've lost in this war against ISIS 
is I just found out from Grant's brother Gordon. Defeating ISIS, killing his enemies. I mean, they weren't really brothers, but you know how the military family is. We're all family. Like me, I might not be a soldier myself, but I am still considered military family because my dad served. My dad was United States Army, 82nd Airborne Division, paratrooper, staff sergeant. So I consider any military family member family. Like, even though I cannot serve myself, I do what I can to serve in my own way by helping those that need it, by helping the troops in any way that I can. Whether it's making music for them, whether it's doing art piece for them, or even just as simple as thing as listening to them and talking with them. You guys out there that bash our soldiers every day, you don't know what it's like to watch your friends die on the news, fighting in a war to protect this country from terrorism. You don't know what it's like to watch the news and see your best friend's body being drugged out of a Humvee, knowing that he'll never go home, knowing that he'll never come back to see his family again. Like, you don't know what that's like. I do. I've been there. I've watched some of my best friends in the world who I saw as family, you know, be carried out of Humvees because of Al Qaeda and back in the Iraq war and, you know, like, you guys don't know what that's like. You guys don't know what it's like to be on the front lines. So if you've never served or you're not, or you don't have any family members or friends that are in the military, then you have no room to talk. You have no room to judge because you don't know what it's like on those front lines. You don't know what our soldiers go there and deal with and then have to come back and fight for. They go overseas and fight for our country. Some don't make it back and the ones that do, the lucky few that do make it back, they have to deal with a lot. And I mean a lot. They have to deal with PTSD. TBI, they have to deal with a lot of stuff that they were not trained for. Like, you guys don't know what that's like. So for those of you that have not served, you need to shut your mouth. Because you don't know what it's like. And once you have family or friends that have served, you've got no room to talk. It's because of our truth that you guys are still free. You guys don't understand that the simplest mistake, you know, the simplest mistake or miscommunication between countries can wipe us out like that. Take a country like North Korea. They want us dead. Alright, and everybody knows it. Kim Jong-il wants us dead. And just think, if we didn't have our military protecting our borders, he could come right in, take all of our freedoms away, and we couldn't do a damn thing to stop him. You don't know what it's like in areas like North Korea. My best friend James, who is a Christian and a news reporter for a local TV station where he's at, was killed. He was killed by Kim Jong-un because he's a Christian. Because he read a Bible. A Bible. He was killed for reading a Bible in North Korea and he didn't know. Like, 
You gotta understand, like, that's a way of life for them. That's what North Korea deals with. They deal with a tyrannical dictator who is more of a terrorist than he is a president or dictator or whoever the fuck you want to call him. The man is a terrorist. So why the fuck won't our government man up and do something? He was killed. My friend James was killed along with almost 800 other people. 80 to 800 people were killed publicly. And so yes, I've endured a lot of losses, both family and friends. But I hope those of you that do not believe in our military, I hope you start believing in them now. Because it's people like them that are going to save our lives. They put their lives on the line every single day. And they're normal people just like me and you. And believe me, if I could serve, I would serve. But I can't because of medical issues. And does it suck? Yeah. But I don't make a fuss about it. I'm still here. I'm still standing by our soldiers. And I'll admit, you know. To be honest with you, like if I had the chance to assert and a war broke out here in our country and they called civilians to arms, yes, I would fight. I would gladly stand by any one of my brothers and sisters and fight alongside them if terror came to our own country. If war broke out and they called on civilians, I can honestly say that yes, I would fight. I would fight to protect my own. I would fight to protect every single one of you guys. And I know I can't serve, so you know how I, I serve in my own way? Like I said, I do everything from making music to talking with them, checking up on them. You know, just simple acts of kindness. Because those simple acts of kindness, you might not realize this, but those simple acts mean the world to our soldiers. They mean the world to our troops. You don't know what it's like to be in a war zone. You really do not know. With that being said, I'm gonna hop off here and I will catch you guys later on this morning. Like I said, I hope what I told you guys. You know, I hope, I hope that makes you guys think. I love you guys, every single one of you.